Hello. I'm freaking cold, guys. When is the summer again? Okay, today, let's talk about photogrammetry and point clouds. You will learn how to import points data into Derivative Touch Designer and how to play with it. My puppet master is a huge enthusiast of this technique. He made lots of visuals based on photogrammetry over the years. All right, before diving into the software, we have to discuss a little about theory. First of all, we call photogrammetry the technology of obtaining reliable information about blah blah blah, shut up Wikipedia. We just want 3D objects from photos. There are plenty of softwares on the market, but Reality Capture is the one my master prefer the most, don't ask me why, he's a jerk. Basically, you don't have to do much things. Just take a lot of photos of the same place, like a fucking idiot. Then, give them to your software, wait. Wait. Wait again, and, voila, you have a pretty decent point cloud, or not. Now, you can resample this cloud by choosing the maximum number of points, or simply export the data into a file on your hard drive. Don't go too high, you jackass, let's say 1 million points is enough. Once again, a lot of formats and extensions are available but we go for simple text format, I mean extension.txt or .xyz. Wait. Text format? Yes, and I will explain this right now. You can open the file in a text editor to discover the main structure of this shit. You will obtain a very long text, precisely one line per point. So. 1 million points mean 1 million lines. The three first fields are the position coordinates TXTY and TZ. The next three are color values, red, green, and blue. To import this data into Touch Designer, let's create a point file in top. We choose the three first fields and obtain this very ugly image but its position data for all our points. Create a point file, select top, drag and drop one onto another. And now, we select the three next fields. We have our color, almost. Color values are encoded from 0 to 127 in the text file, so to get the right colors, create a math top and divide by 127. Create now two null tops, rename them position and color. If you want, you can even create a point transform top to apply 3D transformations to your point cloud, like translation, rotation, or scale. A geometry comp. Delete the default torus. Add SOP, add a point. Convert SOP, choose particle per point option, and render as point sprite. As usual, don't forget the render flags you fool. Let's instantiate this geo with our first null, for position, and the second one, for color. Okay, a point sprite mat, apply it. Create a render top, set the resolution to your needs. Open the palette, drag and drop the camera viewport. The container is the one above and the render top is render one. You will probably need to activate middle mouse button and right button on the above panel to get proper mouse interactivity. Go back inside. That's it, we now have our point cloud. Oh wow, I think it's time to a little break. I feel so high, I even touch the sky. Okay, welcome back. This is the fun part starting. Ha ha ha, I'm joking. Let's see some theory again. As we see earlier, we have points coordinates encoded in colors. Red channel for X position, green for Y and blue for Z. So, for this particular color, I get this point position. And for this image, I get these points. Before going further, you need to see basic concepts about working in 3D with 2D images. Masking, color, and transformation with these three simple concepts, you can easily obtain a very large range of results, depending on how you'll combine them. Masking. Masking is the ability to apply an effect for some points, but not for others. There are different types of masking. We will discuss about two types here. You can even think about create your own method. The linear method, based on world axis, is created with a threshold top. Indeed, for example, a threshold top on red color will create a condition for selecting points that have specific coordinates on x-axis. A fully white mask means all points are selected. A black one, none of them. Same thing on y-axis. 
The radial method is just a little bit more sophisticated. We start by calculating the distance of all the points from a specific point in space, the center of our effect. Then a threshold again, acting like a radius of influence. Color. No much to say about that. If I had some red color, the points will become red. Impressive Hein. Transformation. If I add green to my image, all my points will go up. If I multiply values, points will expand. If I add noise, they will go all around, like crazy. And so on. Now you get it. It's time to combine these concepts. For example, apply some noise and color variations only to those points. And this is how we will do that. On the top, we have our position data and color at the bottom. You can first define a zone, then apply some transformations and color if needed, only on selected points. That's it, but it's very powerful and the possibilities are limitless. Let's go back to our point cloud. Create two null tops. Select them, right click, collapse selected, rename this as wave, dive inside our new base. So as we see earlier, create a threshold top, green axis, level top. To understand what points are selected, add some cyan to color, over top. Try different types of comparators. Okay, good. Let's say this wave will also push the points up, a little bit. Up means to add some green values, you remember. So, constant top, green. Add top and connect it to the position data. If you now animate the threshold, the wave will pass over and over. Beat chop. Math chop. Change the ranges and drag it to the threshold parameter. That's it. Okay. Let's try something else. Duplicate this base. Call it mouse. Change color to red for more clarity. And what we want here is to change the affected points, so our masking has to be modified. Create a constant top that will can be considered as the center. Substract top. We subtract it with the position image to have vectors directions. Math top. We invoke Pythagoras with square, add, root, configuration. Create a new threshold top. Greater comparator, mode luminance, and choose a radius. We don't want to push the points up by adding constant values, but messing things around with some noise instead. Noise top. Output tab, input.noise. Not monochrome. Calibrate the period and the amplitude. The radial influence is set up, but this region will be derived by mouse position, for example. Create a mouse chop. Math chop to adapt ranges. Link channels to this constant top, our center. We can now animate our noise with a simple Python expression. ABS time dot seconds multiply by 0.2. We also add some soften to the threshold. Okay, did you see that? Isn't it awesome? Before leaving you, I would like to show you two or three more things for affecting points positions. You can limit your points positions by clamping minimal or maximal position values. There are plenty of ways to do that, but the easiest way is a limit top. The points will be stuck, like if they hit a wall or something. See? Noise can be unpredictable, but extreme values sometimes give you really nice abstract results. Okay, one more. Adding some noise to positions can be boring sometimes. But, as soon as we insert it in a feedback loop, the result is immediately far more interesting. Okay, one more again. Be creative with your conditions. 
multiply some noises with vectors directions and this will create some nice looking holes everywhere. This one is nice, also. We create another point transform top. Do you see the second input? It's for masking. So a threshold top can do the trick. Now, our transformations will only be applied on some selection. That's great. But, for extreme transformations, it can be problematic. So I ended up with this solution. Put this inside a feedback loop. At each frame, the point transform will do its job and we obtain this nice, twisted effect. Last but not least, you can even blend multiple point clouds together. Import another 3D scan, with position and color. If the number of points is different, fit tops to make them the same size in pixels. Use two synchronized switch tops, with blending inputs option. Like this. I hope you will have fun, guys. In fact, no, I don't care. This tutorial is based on a two days workshop my puppeter gave last year at Stereolix in France. The whole project is available for download for free on his Patreon. Please go check this out. Some stuff are free access. And with money, you can even become a Patreon for some exclusive project files, tutorials and more. Seriously? He needs money to buy some food or what? Silly. Which looser needs to eat? You can also check his works on social medias. Ah, oh, I'm glad it's finished. I'm finally going back to bed. See you, suckers.